Hey everyone, I'm Jessica, and I am here today to talk about a solo mode for a game that you probably know a lot about, but maybe you didn't know that there's an official solo mode for it. That game I'm talking about, and that I have actually gotten back to my table and been playing a lot with all the memories, is... Oh, that's right. It's Carcassonne. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the big box from way back in the day. I have the original with all of the fantastic artwork from first edition, which I love. And as I just discovered, the best box art because it has a fun typo on it. <laughs> Down over here, that should be the princess and the dragon. But here, I thought for a second I had some unique promo with the princess and the dragon. No, just the typo. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody knows about Carcassonne. It's a very popular game. Um, that is one of the ones that actually got me into modern board gaming. In a nutshell, it's tile laying. You're connecting features and scoring points on a little map in the countryside. Easy. Done. <laughs> and that is the cool thing that I found as I was going back through it. Nowadays, rule books are usually, you know, you got lots of examples, you got lots of different mechanics going on. This one is a whopping four pages. You got your setup, uh, components, and some general instructions. Then you got how to deploy your different followers, what it means to complete these different features, and then you got final scoring. Boom, you're done. <laughs> I appreciate rule books like that and ones with simple rules, but what is this official solo variant I'm talking about? It actually was released back in 2020 from the publisher. So this is not a fan made or third party one. This is from the actual publisher of Carcassonne. I kind of wrote it off because again, it's Carcassonne. I play a lot of other newer games. I have Carcassonne, don't really play it that much. So why do it? Um, there's also a lot of other unofficial solo variants out there from people who have come up with neat ways to play solo. There's one, the Carcassonne Island or Carc Island solo variant, where you're trying to create a seven by seven grid and just kind of fill it in. You got a couple of discards that you can use up and you're just trying to complete everything. Fun little puzzle. The official solo variant though, I did not check it out until recently and because again, it was released recently, so I'm like, this is gonna be a lot of rules, right? It's a it's a double-sided sheet. That's it. They they stay true to the short rules. So what is this all about? With the official solo variant, you are actually gonna be controlling three different meeple colors, and you're gonna be going through and playing turns for each of those. So I use red, green, and blue. It plays almost exactly the same as the original game, with the exception that there are no farmers, there's no fields to score in the end, which I actually kind of like, because even in multiplayer, that's the one where at the end you're like, okay, who who is connected to this city? Ah, uh, there's three of us, wait, hold on. Is it three? Go around that river, does that go around? And following paths and everything like that. It's a great element to the multiplayer game, but solo, I was kind of happy to see it. I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> So you're basically scoring cities, roads, and those fun cloisters. And each turn, again, you'll start with the starting tile as usual. You'll go through each meeple. We'll basically play, pick up a tile. You'll look at it and connect it in the regular fashion. However, if there is a feature on that tile that is not connected to one that somebody already has claimed, you need to put out a meeple. And each meeple color only has four meeples available to them. So they're very limited and you only get them back when you score, obviously. But here's the other caveat and what makes this very challenging and fun. Only the meeple color with the lowest score can actually score each time. So let's say that blue is ahead by 10 points and blue gets a city piece that's going to complete their city. Great. They're going to get another, you know, let's say six points from that city. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they actually can't score that. So you can actually, you can complete that city for blue, but because they're in the lead, and we'll just assume the other ones have zero points at this point, they can either complete that city to get their meeple back without scoring, or try to add it on to another city, maybe that red or green is working on, or they can start a new city with it, but they have to put out a meeple. And you will lose as soon as you need to put out a meeple and you don't have one. So when all four are out and you draw a tile and you got to claim that feature, that's it. That, that is 
That's it in a nutshell. And you're just using base game Carcassonne rules. I'm loving it. Um, over the course of a couple days, I actually played 34 times in a row. Yeah, 34 times. <laughs> <laughs> because it takes about five to ten minutes. I am trying to use all the tiles and your final score is the lowest score um, on the board. So whatever meeple is in last place, that's what you score. Um, I have gotten into the 20s, the 30s, even the 40s. And the other day I hit it, I got 54 points. So I got over 50 and I am loving it. I'm having a great time with just the base game. Um, expansions, because we know Carcassonne, there's a ton of expansions and I have the big box. So there's a lot of expansions in there. I am starting to try to incorporate those. There are no official rules for them, but I like tile variety. I like kind of seeing, will this work? Does this make sense? I'm adding those in. So I am trying out using the river tiles to, as a starting one. My little variant that I use for that, there's usually 12 river tiles that you'll put out to connect and make a meandering river. Um, I actually put in the end tile for the river and mix it in so I can have a river that is very, very short. <laughs> and in those cases, I'll just add the starting tile to the area and it's done. Um, I'm also adding in things like, if we recall, one of the old, old ones, I have King and Scout when it wasn't even in with an expansion. That one grants points for the number of cities um, at the end to the person who has completed the largest one. And the same thing with roads. It's another nice little scoring opportunity at the end. I haven't found that these make things easier though, because again, it's always the last place meeple that can score points. So I am having a great time re-exploring this classic, remembering all those fun times back in the day and just playing through this fun puzzle. It plays quickly, it is, Easy to play if you're familiar with the multiplayer rules, and even if not, it's a quick one to learn. It's a nice little puzzle, and it just makes me appreciate kind of where a lot of modern games are coming from. Carcassonne, um, for a lot of us, I think, was one of the ones that got us into the hobby. And now it is nice to be able to play it solo in an official capacity. Um, it is still a puzzle. It's still challenging. And it's fun. <laughs> so if you have a copy of Carcassonne just laying around, maybe it's not getting a lot of attention, give the solo variant a try if you're into playing solo. I am having a great time with it. Again, you, you don't have to, this is it. This is all you have to learn. And it's, you know, it, it's the standard giant graphics. <laughs> <laughs> and examples to, to show you how everything works. And, and the other cool thing is it's kind of cooperative because if you can get all of those meeples to share in a city somehow, you might re remember this from multiplayer where you tried to steal it from someone, but sometimes you shared those points. Sharing points is the best thing you can do here. Um, I've had it where I've had almost a was it almost a 30 point city, I believe, that I managed to connect everybody in with and everybody got those points and moved ahead, which was the greatest moment. <laughs> so yeah, I'm having a blast with this, still looking at exploring more of these expansions from a big box. <laughs> it's just been sitting there for years doing nothing. Now it has a nice little lease on life at my solo table. <laughs> So, as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you get some fun solo games to your table and just enjoy gaming in general. <laughs> thanks. Bye.